John chapter 1. Let's begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Man, that'll clear up a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, bad doctrine right there. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through Him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. And that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. I want to stop right here for just a few moments tonight, and, 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 and I want you to notice some things right here in the Scriptures that we've already read so far. I want you to notice how many times the word him has already been used. I want you to notice tonight how many times the word his and how many times the word he has already been used. Uh, the, the Bible goes on in verse number 12 and says, But as many as received him, to him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse number 15, John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we perceived, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, man. No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father. He hath declared Him. As we've read down through the first 18 verses right here in John chapter 1, we notice a very familiar theme right here in the Scriptures. Uh, we notice uh, uh, that John is writing about a person he simply refers to as he and a person that he refers to as him and a person he refers to as his. Uh, we, we, who is the him? Who is the he and who is the his? Uh, the John is writing about none other than the Lord Jesus Christ right here in the Scriptures. Uh, if we continued reading down through the rest of chapter 1, uh, we'd find out that John is still writing about this person person uh, called Jesus. Amen. If we had read chapter 2 uh, here in the Gospel of John, we'd find that John continues writing about uh, him. Uh, chapter 3, chapter 4, and chapter 5, he's writing all about him. Amen. Uh, we, a matter of fact, we can carry all the way down uh, through the rest of the Gospel of John, all the way through the 21 chapters right here in the Gospel of John. And we would find tonight that John is writing all about him. Amen. So who is this Him? Who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus that John is writing about? Well, I want to take you on a little trip right here tonight. and Take your Bible and hold your place there in the Gospel of John. We're going to preach through most of this chapter tonight. Pastor, you got a uh, time frame? Amen. That is dangerous. <clears throat> Nobody's got anything cooking, right? Nothing gonna burn. I'm being serious. I'm being serious. Oh, listen, I want to take you on a trip tonight. Oh, man. Hold your place there in the Gospel of John and take your Bibles and go to the book of Acts, chapter number one, the very next book of the Bible. Who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus? I'm gonna read this verse of scripture right here. We're gonna pray. We're going to talk about this for just a few moments tonight. Acts chapter 1, the Bible says, beginning in verse number 9. Who is this Jesus? Acts chapter 1, verse number 9. And when he had spoken these things, 
talking about the previous things that had come to pass right here in the scriptures how Jesus was talking to the disciples and told them uh, back in verse number 8 but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost y'all y'all know that verse of scripture uh, this is where we get the great commission from this is where Jesus tells them I tarry there in Jerusalem till the Holy Ghost comes upon you and then after that you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost parts of the, uh, of the earth and he says and when he had spoken these things Things. while they beheld he was taken up and, and a cloud received him out of their sight while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel which also said watch this ye men of Galilee why stand ye gazing up into the heavens I want you to notice this very next phrase this same Jesus this same Jesus this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. Who is this Jesus? This Jesus the same Jesus. This same Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the day that you've given us. God, we thank you, Lord, for the service God was in this morning. God, I thank you, Lord, for the man of God, Lord, that's not afraid to stand and preach your word. Father, Lord, that's not afraid to stand and, and warn people about the realities of hell. God, I thank you, Lord, this morning, God, for saving Miss Tara. God, I thank you, Lord, for your marvelous grace, God, that saved me. God, as a 16-year-old boy in May of 1991, Green Street Baptist Church in High Point, North Carolina, God, I know that tonight, God, your grace is not, not, not just sufficient for me, but God, it's sufficient for all who believe. God, I ask you, Father, tonight, God, you'd help us, God, to preach your word. God, help us, God, not to say anything, God, you'd, us, uh, you'd, you'd want us not to say. God, help us say everything, God, that you'd have us to say. God, I ask you tonight, God, you'd open our ears, let us hear the word of God. Father, you'd open our eyes, let us see ourselves like you see us. God, I ask you tonight, Father, you'd open our hearts. God, help us, God, to be receptive to your word. God, I also pray you'd help us, God, not to be hearers only. Help us, God, not to be seers only. And help us, God, not to be receptive only. Help us to be doers also of what you've got for us. And Father, above all these things, God, I pray that you would be glorified. God, that you would get the glory out of everything that's said and done here tonight. Father, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name and for his sake we ask and pray. Amen and amen. Who is this Jesus uh, that we're talking about here tonight? I, I, I just simply want to preach on this, uh, on this thought tonight. It's all about him. Amen. It's all about who is this Jesus? Well, I found out, hey, listen, it's the same Jesus, uh, listen, that spoke the world into existence. Uh, this is the same Jesus. Hey, listen, it's the same Jesus uh, that spoke the sun and the moon and the stars in the sky. This is the same Jesus that created human and placed him in the Garden of Eden. This is the same Jesus. Hey, listen, this is the same Jesus that led the children of Israel across the dry Red Sea. Amen. Hey, this is the same Jesus. Hey, listen to me tonight. This is the same Jesus that sustained Elijah. Oh, man, when he's down there by the brook. Hey, this is the same Jesus tonight that sustained the widow woman. Hey, when she, when she sustained Elijah in her home. This is the same Jesus tonight. Hey man, listen. Hey, this is the same Jesus. Uh, when you come into the scriptures, uh, that healed the lame man. Yeah. This is the same Jesus that caused the blind man to see. Yeah. This is the same Jesus. Hey, that came to me as a sixteen-year-old boy. The uh, same Jesus that convicted my heart and saved my unworthy soul. Yeah. If you're saved tonight, this is the same Jesus. Hey, that saved your undying soul as well. This is the same Jesus that we're talking about tonight. Yeah. This is the same Jesus. I found right here in Acts chapter 1, verse number 9 uh, through 11, this is the same Jesus. Hey, listen, which is taken up from you into heaven. Yeah. Hey, it's the same Jesus that walked up Calvary's hill. Yeah. Hey, shed his precious blood for you and me. Yeah. This is the same Jesus that was buried in a barred tomb. Yeah. Uh, this is the same Jesus that rode again the third day. Yeah. This is the same Jesus. Watch this that shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into hell. Hey, listen, that's the same Jesus that's coming back. It's the same Jesus. Same one. Oh, man if, we could, man, if we could get that tonight. 
Oh man, we think about our problems and we think about the things we go through and the trials and the tribulations and we think, ah, 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 well, just face it tonight, man. A lot of times we think our God's dead. He can't do what we need Him to do. Hey, but can I remind you tonight, the same Jesus, same one. Same Jesus that provided a lamb for Abraham. No. Same Jesus. Same Jesus. Same one. Same Jesus caused the children of Israel to walk in the wilderness 40 years. Fed them the whole time. Can you imagine what it would have been like to walk in the wilderness 40 years barefooted? I believe I had some shoes on. You ever walked in hot sand? Burns your feet. Can't stand it. I believe same Jesus kept shoes on our feet for 40 years. How'd y'all like to have shoes on your kids' feet for 40 years? Same Jesus. Oh man, listen, the same Jesus that did it for them. Same Jesus that can do it for me. Hey, it's the same Jesus that can do it for you. The same Jesus that saved Miss Tara this morning. Hey, listen, if you're sitting here tonight on the sound of my voice, even on live stream, hey, listen, the same Jesus that saved her this morning is the same Jesus that can save your soul. Same Jesus. Oh, man, I believe it'd do us good tonight if we'd get this thing all about him. Amen. It's, it's not about Brother Allen. It's not about Brother Allen. It's, it's, it's not about Brother Foster. It's not about Emmanuel Baptist Church. It's, hey, listen, it's, it's all about him. Amen. It's all about him. See, I can't do what Jesus has done. I can't do the things that Jesus has done in my life. It's all about him tonight. Amen. It's all about him. I want to preach on that thought for just a few moments tonight. I believe our lives would be a whole lot better if it just be all about him. It'd be a great improvement if our churches would just be all about Him. Hey, listen, I want to take the Gospel of John tonight, just give you a few things. I believe John, uh, John the Beloved right here, I, I believe he understood uh, what it was like uh, to have a life that was all about Jesus. I believe he knew uh, that this thing had to be all about Him. I want to take the Gospel of John tonight and show you some things right here. I'm not going to preach it all verse by verse, but I am going to highlight a few things throughout this gospel that I believe will help us. Number one, I want to look at this. The timing that's associated with this gospel. There's a timing that's associated with this gospel. I'm talking about it being all about Him. Amen. It's all about Him. The timing, as I studied this, I found out that John penned these words down somewhere between 85 and 96 A.D. Somewhere between 85 and 96 A.D., you say, what's that got to do with anything? It's very significant. If this is true, that means John was an old preacher man. Yeah. If this is true, hey, listen, John has been already been in the ministry somewhere between 50 and 60 years. Now, I'm not saying he's between 50 and 60 years old. He's been in the ministry somewhere between 50 and 60 years. Common, common practice during that day is in order for you to be a priest or, or a preacher, so to speak, in that day, as a Jew, listen to me now, as a Jew, you had to be at least 30 years old. Right. And so if he's already been in the ministry somewhere between 50 and 60 years, you can, you, you just put it on paper, he's somewhere between 80, at least 80 to 90 years old. I'm talking about, the, hey listen, I'm talking about it being all about him tonight. All about Jesus. If he wrote this between 85 and 96 A.D., that means Matthew's gospel had already been pinned down. Uh, when John first took the pen, being led by the Holy Ghost, he began to write these words here in the gospel of John. Mark's work was already complete. All of Luke's work had, had already been finished. That, that's Luke and, 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 and the Acts. Peter's work had already been recorded. James's work had already been finished. If John wrote this down between 85 and 96 A.D., that also means the Apostle Paul's writings had already been finished. Just bear with me. I'm going somewhere with this. Everything else had already been finished. Think about this. John's an old preacher man. <clears throat> Y'all do believe this Bible's inspired, right? 
I know you did because I know your preacher. I know your preacher does anyways. Y'all don't y'all understand what that means? For all scriptures get by inspiration. That word inspiration means God breathed. How does God breathe to his people? Through the Holy Ghost, right? God, John being led by the Holy Ghost. Get this now. John's an old preacher man. Should you use your imagination for just a moment? Think about this. John is sitting in his house. The Holy Ghost comes to John. He says, John, I've got something very important I want you to do. John, you better go get you a pen and a piece of that parchment paper. John, I got some words I want you to write down. John, you better get situated real good. We're going to be here for just a little while. Now, I can't say that it happened exactly like this. But inspiration, God breathed, the Holy Ghost, and John. I kind of put it together. John's sitting in his house. The Holy Ghost comes and begins to take John down memory's lane. See, John got to walk with Jesus. John got to lay over on his bosom. John got to see Jesus perform miracles. John, man, John got to walk with God in the flesh. John got to, man, he got to, he, he, he got to walk arm in arm. With the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Think about this now. I didn't hurt you, did I? I forgot, man, we ain't young no more. I need one of my boys on the front row. John. John got to walk with God. He got to walk with the Lord. Now, now, now the Holy Ghost begins to take John down memory's lane. Just go with me in your mind, if you will. John is sitting at his desk. Man, he's done went and got his pen, done went and got his ink well. Man, done went and got his parchment paper. And he's sitting there, and the Holy Ghost begins to take John down memory. John's writing this down as the Holy Ghost is breathing it to him. Mm. John is writing this down as the Holy Ghost is breathing it to him. I just see uh, every now and then a smile come on John's face. What do you think? A smile, big old smile come on John's face. Man, he thinks about, hey, how, how Jesus turned that water into water. <laughs> big old smile come on his face. Man, I think, hey, so the, man, I think about, hey, John sitting there pinning these words down, and tears begin to run down his face, and he and he takes that hanky and begins to wipe his tears, and man, he just pushes back from the desk and says, "Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, Hallelujah." Man, I think about John sitting there pinning these words down. Man, some some of them happy bubbles start filling up in his soul. And I think about man, hey, 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 just pushes that chair back and jumps up and says. Whoa! Man, I got to see him. I got to walk with him. Hey, I got to see him. I got to love on him. I know why he's nervous now. Timing this associated with the gospel. And think about how the Holy Ghost took John down memory's lane. He reminded him of the time that he spent with Jesus. Whew. Man, he's just excited that he got to spend some time with Jesus. Let me ask you this tonight. Man, we get excited about a lot of things. We get excited about, man, our favorite ball team wins. Man, we get excited... Our favorite car race driver wins. We, we, I'm, I'm telling you, man, I, my kids are excited. We're going to the Creation Museum tomorrow. I'm excited about it. We get excited about a lot of things. Let me ask you this. 
Don't get mad at me now. Don't turn me off yet. This is just one of six. Okay? How excited do we get that we just get to spend time with the Lord? How excited are we? <laughs> How excited are we? Man, we just get to go in a prayer closet. And we just get to sit there. <laughs> Oh man, listen, hey, prayer is not just us talking to God. Hey, prayer is us sitting there sometimes and just letting Him talk to us. How excited are we that we just get to spend some time with God? I believe old John was excited. He just got to spend some time with the Lord. See, it's all about Him tonight. It's all about Him tonight. There's a timing that's associated with the Gospel of John. Uh, John pinned this down somewhere between 85 and 96 A.D. I'm going to come back to that here in just a little bit. But number two tonight, I, I want you to see this. Not only was there a timing that's associated with the gospel, but there's a trust achieved before John got to pin this gospel. After studying this, I believe if Jesus had a best friend, it had to been John. Some people make a good case for Peter. Peter did cut that, cut that guy's ear off. I, I, now, now, I'm going to tell you, if somebody's coming to arrest me, I'd want a friend like that. So, hey, so, 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 some people, man, hey, some people make a good case for some of the others, but I believe if Jesus had a best friend while he was here on this earth, that it probably had to be in John. I don't, I don't know of anybody that got any closer to the Lord while the Lord walked on here on this earth than John did. Uh, some, some, as I said, some might try to make a case for Peter, uh, so, but, but I believe uh, tonight the Scripture makes a pretty good case for John. Let me just say this before we go any farther. You're as close to the Lord tonight as you want to be. You're as close to the Lord tonight as you want to be. How many times have we sat in churches and folks raise their hand and say, Preacher, pray for me that I get closer to the Lord. Did you know that you can get as close as you want to get? Oh, listen, hey. The Apostle Paul, he said that I might know him. That I might know him. I, I ain't even going to quote the rest of the verse. He said that I might know him. Do you really know him? The, I, I, I'm not talking about being saved. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about really knowing him. Really knowing him. So you get, to, you get as close to God tonight as you want to. Uh, the closer you get to it means this, though, that, that the farther you, away from the world you're going to get. I just believe John got closer than anybody else. You remember when the disciples sat with Jesus in the upper room? And man, they observed the Lord's Supper there, and Jesus makes a statement while they're sitting there eating together. You remember what he said? He said, one of you is going to betray me. That's country boy. Not reading out of NIV. <laughs> he said, one of you is going to betray me. You remember what, what took place next? Man, they went around the table. They went around the table. There's a question I asked. Now, every one of the disciples asked this question. said, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Except one. You remember who that was? John. You remember what he said? Who is it? Almost as if he already knew it wasn't going to be him. <laughs> Where are you at tonight? Where are you at tonight? Oh, listen to me. Hey, I, I, man. Go to Calvary. You remember Jesus is hanging there on that old rugged cross. He looks down. The Bible tells us there were three people standing there. You remember who those three people were? Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, and John. Remember, Jesus is hanging there on the cross. He looks down. And he says, Woman, behold thy son. We're talking about a trust achieved before he ever gets to take the pen. 
Remember, we're talking about it's all about him. Watch this now. Follow me. John's standing there. He looks down at John and says, Behold thy mother. And the Bible tells us this. <clears throat> From that day forward, John took her into his own home. What a commission. Jesus had just commissioned John, had just entrusted John to look after his own mama. Now I understand if John had been like a lot of young preachers today, he'd have said, I can't do that, Jesus, because I can't preach. I can't do that, Jesus, because they won't nobody know who I am. I can't do that, Jesus, because... Because, man, that, 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 that I won't be out there. They won't, how am I going how, how, how to get support? How am I going to get to preach revival meetings? There ain't nobody going to see me uh, uh, just taking care of your mama, Lord. That ain't what he said. And John understood this thing's a whole lot bigger than John. And let me just tell you tonight, this thing's a whole lot bigger than me. This thing's a whole lot bigger than you tonight. It's all about Him. Amen? Hey, matter of fact, over there, you remember with Jesus, I'm getting ahead of myself right here. You remember over there, hey, when Jesus turned that water into wine, man, they run out of wine there at the, at the marriage. And, 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 and Mary told the disciples, said, whatsoever He saith, do it. Let me just tell you tonight. Whatever he says, do, just do it. Just do it. Don't argue with him. Don't argue with him. Hey, listen, it's not about you. You might be sitting here tonight, man, on the backside of nowhere, hey, thinking nobody sees me. All I am is just a Sunday school teacher. Let me tell you this. I got a God in heaven. Man, a preacher talked about those books this morning. I believe he's keeping record of all that stuff. He's keeping record of every bit of it. But nobody's going to see me. For, it ain't about you. Right. It's about him. Yeah. It's about him. Amen. It's about him. It's all about him. It's not about me this much. It's all about him. I can't save nobody. I can't get nobody saved. I can't save nobody. I, 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 I get to go. I get to preach. Hey, listen, but if he, if he sat me down right now and said, Hey, I just want you to sit here for a little while. I want you to teach Sunday school. Hallelujah, man. Hallelujah. It's not about me. It's not about me. If I get to Utah and nobody ever knows who I am, I'm okay with that. Because I'm right smack dab in the center of God's will. Let me just say this before I go any farther. There ain't no place like being in the center of God's will. Some folks say that God's got a permissive will. He permits us to do things. I like to say this. You're either in God's will or you're out of His will. I believe it's pretty cut and dry. Now, He allows us to make some choices, and we have to face those consequences. But that's not His will that we make those choices. Amen? See, it's, it's, more, it's, it's less about us. It's all about Him. What He wants. Amen? Oh, man, there's a timing that's associated with the gospel. Oh, let, hey, listen. The trust achieved before his gospel, before John ever got to take the pen. Before John, man, the one that we're, uh, the, the one that pinned down the very words that we read tonight, before he ever got to take the pen. When he was taking care of the Lord, you never heard nothing from him for a long time. When he was taking care of the Lord's mama. Nowhere in Scripture do I find that he complained about it either. Nowhere. Just doing what God wanted him to do. 
Amen. I believe he understood that it's all about him. Amen. Trust achieved before his gospel. Let me just say this. There's some thrills accumulated in his gospel. There are. How, how, how long has it been since you've read the gospel of John? How, how long has it been? We've already established that, that, that uh, all the way down through the 21 chapters, man, it's all about him. We've already established that. How long has it been since you've read the gospel of John? And the Holy Ghost has reminded John of some things. Man, he gets over to chapter 2. We've already talked about that marriage, that wedding there at Cana uh, when Jesus turned the water into wine. Uh, you get over to chapter 3 and, and, and John begins to remember the encounter Jesus had with Nicodemus. Uh, you remember that? And Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Uh, you remember that? In John chapter 3, uh, I, I believe he got over there in about verse number 16 as the Holy Ghost was reminding him. He gets over there in verse number 16. Hey, listen, uh, do you remember John 3.16, right? One of my favorite verses in the Bible. I know y'all have heard it quoted, and man, y'all, man, it's almost run ragged in the Baptist church. I know that, but I love it. I, hey, listen, I love to quote it. I love to read it. I love to hear it, hear it read. I love to hear it quoted. I love to preach it. I love to hear it preached. John chapter 3, verse number 16. Hey, this is why I'm saved, by the way. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. Uh, hey, listen. Should not perish. Should not perish. Should not perish. I can't lose it. But have everlasting. There's that word again. Everlasting life. I hope it ain't lost its excitement for you. I hope it ain't lost its excitement for you. John, man, he gets over in John chapter 3, and verse number 16. He, man, he, he gets to studying on that for just a little bit. And uh, some, some folks think that's a little too elementary. Uh, let, let, just take your Bible and go there real quick. you got to see this. How many of you has got a red letter Bible? Several folks. What color is those letters? Think about this. Y'all know what those red letters mean? The very words of Jesus. Imagine what it would have been like to be John. And be there. And hear these very words come out of our Lord's mouth. Hey, listen, imagine what it would have been like to be John. Hey, listen, and hear these very words uh, come out of his mouth. Uh, John remembers the encounter with the woman at the well over in chapter 4. Uh, John remembers uh, how the Lord heals the impotent man over in chapter 5. Man, I'm talking about it being all about him tonight. Uh, John remembers and he sees some other things. And he gets over to chapter 6 and he, and he sees how Jesus feeds the 5,000 with five barley loaves and two small fishes. He sees the Lord himself walking on water. Hey, Amen. Hey, it's all about him tonight. Can you imagine the thrills that John got to experience? Man, I'm talking, how many of y'all like to ro ride roller coasters? I used to love it. Not so much anymore. I'm talking about, man, there's some thrills right here in the Word of God, just right here in the Gospel of John. Hey, listen, that's better than any roller coaster ride you'll ever take. There's some thrills right here in the Gospel of, how long has it been since you've read it? Chapter 10, he got to hear the Lord say out of his own mouth, I am the good shepherd there in verse number 14. Uh, he got to say, uh, hear the Lord say in verse number 15, I lay down my life for the sheep. Uh, chapter 11, uh, in verse number 25, he got to hear the Lord say, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, he that believeth in me, uh, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Uh, verse number 26, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Man, can you imagine what it had been like to be John? He got to watch Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. I'm talking about the thrills right here. It's all about him. Oh, man. The timing that's associated with the gospel, the trust achieved before the gospel the thrills that are accumulated in the gospel 
Then there's some truths that are abounding in the Gospel of John. A whole lot of truths right here in the Gospel. Again, how long has it been since you've read it? This is one of the books of the Bible that when a new... When, when a person first gets saved, one of two books that we send them to first to read. John and Romans, that's exactly right. Why is that, preacher? Well, I believe there's nobody that does any better job at introducing a sinner to the Lord Jesus Christ any better than John in his writings. Now, understanding this is through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. It's still all about him. Amen. It's still all about Jesus. See, he does it in the simplest of ways. He don't get real deep. He don't use any big words. He don't use any big words. Matter of fact, the, the Gospel of John was written on a seven-year-old level. They say a child, when they begin to talk, learns about a hundred words a year. And the Gospel of John only used 700 different words. Use simple words like no, K-N-O-W. How many of y'all know what that means? K-N-O-W. Use, use no 142 times. Use the word believe 100 times. Use the word father 118 times. I, I, hey, listen, just simple words. But John took that simple vocabulary and, and, and captured some of the greatest truths that's ever been put on paper. Let me just remind you of a few of them right here. It's all about Him. Amen. In chapter 1, He's the Lamb of, of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Hey, that was made flesh and, and, and dwelt among us. He's the light that was shining in darkness. In chapter 2, He's the destroyed temple that was raised again in three days. In chapter 3, He's the only begotten Son. In chapter 4, uh, He's the living water. In chapter 5, uh, the Bible says that He's equal with God. In chapter 6, uh, He's the bread of life. In chapter 7, He's a stumbling block to the Pharisees. In chapter 8, He's the forgiver of sin and the light of the world. In chapter 9, He's the giver of sight to the blind. In chapter 10, he is the good shepherd and the door in chapter 11 he is the resurrection and the life in chapter 12 he is worthy hallelujah in chapter 13 he's not too big to wash another man's feet in chapter 14 he's the way the truth and the life in chapter 15 he's the vine and we're the branches in chapter 16 he's the comforter chapter 17 he's the interceder in chapter 18 he's tried and found innocent in chapter 19 uh, we find that he's God's plan for salvation Hey, that was complete uh, when Jesus cried, It is finished on that old rugged cross. In chapter uh, 20, uh, the Bible says he's alive. In chapter 21, guess what he does there? He bids us come and die. Yeah. Hallelujah, man. Yeah. It's all about him. Yeah. It's all about him tonight. Yeah. Yeah. We find that there's a timing that's associated with the gospel, the trust achieved before the gospel thrills that are accumulated in the gospel, the truths that are abounding in the gospel of John. I want you to notice right here, number five tonight, I, I believe that there were some tears that accompanied the gospel of John. However, in this, I believe John understood that it's not about him. It's about him. See, you've got to understand this. I, I, I'm not talking about in John 11, 35 where the Bible says Jesus wept, but while John was writing this, he probably shed some tears. Probably a bunch of tears. See, I believe there were some tears that accompanied the gospel. Number one, because of the place. You remember I told you, uh, I, I talked to you about the timing that's associated with the gospel. Let's go back to there. If this was pinned down between 85 and 96 A.D., John is in Ephesus. You remember where John's home place was? John was from Jerusalem. Why is John not in Jerusalem? You remember back in 70 AD, there was a man by the name of Titus came through and destroyed John's hometown. Can you imagine what it had been like to be John? 
and just had all its family destroyed, its hometown. The only one we read about here is John. We don't read about his family. We don't read about his mama and papa, mom and daddy, aunts and uncles, cousins. We read about John. Titus come through and destroyed Jerusalem. This is just 15 years early, earlier. Can you imagine what it would have been like to be John to see all your childhood destroyed? But wait a minute. I believe he shed some tears over the place because he's not at home. He's in Ephesus. I believe that'd probably bother us a little bit as well. But I also believe he shed some tears because of some personal things. See, history tells us that they took John at one point and dipped his body in some boiling oil. History tells us that, it, that, they, that he was exiled to an isle called Patmos. Uh, history tells us that all this was persecution from him preaching the gospel. I believe he shed some tears because of some personal things. And then I believe he shed some tears because of some people. I'm going somewhere with this. If this was written between 85 and 96 A.D., that means Stephen. You remember Stephen? That, that, that bright, young, preaching deacon. Y'all remember Stephen? Stephen had already been stoned to death. This was written between 85 and 96 A.D. James had already been beheaded. Before John takes the pen for the first time, the Apostle Paul had already lost his head. Can you imagine getting that phone call? John, I got some bad news. Apostle Paul just lost his head. John, they're persecuting the church really bad. Uh, if this was written between 85 and 96 A.D., could, uh, hey, listen, can you imagine the, how the word got back to John about Matthew and how he had already done been slain with a halibut? The, the Mark had already done been dragged to pieces by the people of Alexandria. Peter had already been crucified on a cross upside down because he thought it not worthy to be crucified the same way as his Lord. Luke had already been hanged in an olive tree. Thomas had already been thrust through with a spear. Philip had already been beaten and thrown into prison and then crucified. That was in 54 A.D. Jude had already been crucified in 72 A.D. Andrew had already been crucified in Asia. Bartholomew had already been skinned alive and then beheaded. James the Less had already been beat to death with a club. Matthias had already been uh, stoned to death and then beheaded in the streets of Jerusalem. If this was written between 85 and 96 A.D., I believe John shed some tears because he was the only one left. Everybody he used to run with is gone. Oh, they didn't die of natural causes. They were killed for preaching the Word of God. The very same thing John was doing. I believe he shed some tear because of some people. Yeah, let me just say this. Would you have blamed John if it had just took the pen? And just wrote one chapter about how hard it was being a disciple. Would you have blamed John if it had just took the pen and maybe just one verse? about how tough life's been to him. Would you blame John if he'd have just wrote one sentence about how hard it's been to serve Jesus in this day? Wait a minute now. And I don't mean to come off in the wrong way or whatever. We don't face nothing like they did. Yeah, we drag our hind leg coming into church. Oh, preacher. Boy, I've had a rough week. Oh, preacher. If I just sit right there for just a little bit, boy, it's been hard this week. We don't face nothing like they did. We 
we really get to go. We really get to go. Man, I think about those, some of those Christians over in China right now. Well, if they, if they seen that sign right there, they'd wonder why this church ain't packed out. I really get to go? Where's everybody at? I think about those Christians over in India right now. Over in Vietnam and, and, and North Korea right now. Man, if they're caught with the Word of God... Can I borrow that just a second? If they're caught with the Word of God, it's immediate death to some right. of them. Right. We really get to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. I think some of us got the idea that it's more about me. How hard it is on me. Less about him. Would you blame John? See, that ain't what he did. See, see, John had plenty of heartache, had plenty of sorrows. But, but listen, all he wanted to do was magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. In every one of his writings, that's all he did was magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, when we study the scriptures, we find that. Of the only books of the Bible that had not been written at this time were the Gospel of John, the Epistles of John, that's 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and the book of the Revelation. Now I want to challenge you tonight to go and read those books. And if you can find one verse or one sentence where John did any complaining... Or where John talked about how hard it was to serve God. He never did that. Matter of fact, what you will find is even in all three of the epistles, just as the, just as the gospel of John, you'll find that it's still all about him. Matter of fact, take your Bible and go to the book of Revelation, uh, chapter number 1 tonight. The book of Revelation, chapter number 1. Uh, this is number six right here on the list. This is, this is my last point. We're, we'll, we'll be done right here. The trials after the gospel. John's been faithful. He writes those three epistles. Everywhere he goes, he magnifies the Lord. He's been in the ministry between 50 and 60 years. Uh, and, 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 and John is now exiled to the Isle of Patmos. And he's already been boiled, thrown throw on the Isle of Patmos, left to die. The trials after the gospel. But I want you to notice something. If that had been me or you, we'd have stepped back and we'd have said, Lord, why is this happening to me? Lord, I've, been, I've tried to be faithful. Lord, I, I've, I, I've tried to be true. Oh, look what's happened to me. Man, it's so hard. Look what John said in Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, he said this, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you. And pe Man, I'm going to tell you, if that had been me, I wouldn't have been writing grace be unto you. I'd have been writing, somebody send me some grace. Yeah, but he said, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was all about him and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him even so. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come, uh, the Almighty, 
I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that's called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Look what he says right here in verse number 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Uh, even though John's been through all these trials and all these tribulations, he's still all about him. He's still writing all about him. Right here in the book of Revelation still all about him all about him now now let's stop right here just a minute I'm done right here if you're not saved tonight I understand why your life ain't all about him when, but before I got saved man I was living for myself I was living for what I thought was joy for myself I understand. Hey, listen, if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, I know why your life ain't all about Him. I understand that. Man, I do. I fully understand that. But if you're sitting here tonight and you're saved, we have no excuse. Who are you representing? Who are you? See, the Bible says we're ambassadors for Christ. I'm just going to be honest with you tonight. I know a lot of Christians that are ambassadors for themselves. Just shooting it straight. They said I was on live stream, and I said, if you want, if you, if you want to clean up a mess afterwards, that's okay. <laughs> Who are you representing? Is your life all about you and how hard it's been on you and all about your family and how much you get to preach and how much you get to sing and how much you get to teach Sunday school and how much you get to be seen in church and how much you get to be seen out in the world. Hey, listen, is your life all about you? Or is it all about Him? The Gospel of John, being pinned down by John himself through inspiration of the Holy Ghost, understood this thing's a lot bigger than me and you. He can do things we can never do. It's all about Him. Matter of fact, let me just let me just take you back just a little while here. He said this. He said, "If I be lifted up," he didn't say, "If Brother Davis be lifted up," he didn't say, "If Brother Davis walk in the back of the church, man." holding his chest out, bowing his chest out, man, saying, look at me. He didn't say, if Brother Davis's family be lifted up. He didn't say, if Brother Foster be lifted up. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll do what? Draw all men. It's all about him. It's all about him. Why did he come? To seek and to save. That was, if you're sitting here tonight and you've never trusted Christ, He's seeking you. He's seeking you for one purpose to save you. Will you trust Him? Will you trust Him? It's not about trusting your good works, it's not about trusting that. Pastor covered every bit of that this morning. It's not about all that stuff, it's not about what you've done. It's not about how much money you can put in a plate, how many times you've been dunked in the baptismal waters, how many bubbles you blew while you's down there. It's all about Him. What He's already done. Amen. How about it tonight? Have you ever put your trust in Christ, in Him? Is your life about Him? Who are you representing tonight as a saved person? Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the day that you've given us. God, I thank you, Lord, for the services this morning. God, I thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. Lord, we just ask you, God, tonight, Lord, that you would get the glory out of this time. Father, Lord, help us, God, to make our lives all about you. Oh, God, there's times, Father, that I've failed you. God, there's times, Lord, that, Lord, I've made this thing about me even. God, I need your help. God, help us, Lord, to realize this thing 
It's all about Him. It's all about Jesus, the one that died for us. The one that's still seeking sinners and saving sinners today. God, the one that saved Miss Tara this morning. God, the one that can still save and is looking to save that sinner that may be nearest hell tonight. Help us, Father Lord, to realize that. And God, to do it. Lord, make this thing all about Him. And Father, we'll thank You. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.